Hey everyone, this is AJYT Abbott, and today I'm going to be ranking all 19 MCU films. So, I'm not going to be including Ant-Man and the Wasp in this list, because I haven't seen it. But if you haven't seen any of these Marvel movies, this will contain spoilers. So, at number 19 is Thor The Dark World. Now, this movie is just still the weakest of the bunch, and for good reason. The only good parts of this is when Loki is on screen, and once again, the acting... The acting isn't that good. I mean, Chris Hemsworth tries his best, it seems like, but it just doesn't end up chalking up a good movie. Malekith is one of the weakest villains we've ever had, and it's actually a really, just really dull and weak movie, and I'm not surprised about a lot of people having it as their least favorite or second least favorite, because it's not done that good, and it's one of the weakest, if not the weakest. At number 18 is Iron Man 2. Now, what I really don't like about this one is Whiplash is such a forgettable villain. And the directing in this one is just absolutely horrendous. Whoever directed this film needs to be fired. I hope they were fired. Really, you get all that technology and all you make is whips? Come on, man. And why is every single scene in this movie just feel so rushed? We have good introductions like... Natasha and you know Don Gito's War Machine. Other than that, this is really just not a very well done movie. Whoever directed it, like I said, should be fired or might be fired. At number 17 is The Incredible Hulk. Now, I can realize um, some of this hate is well deserved, with this being kind of a boring, bland movie at times, um, with the final act with Abomination vs. Hulk being fairly action packed. Um, I like the Hulk transformation scene. I, I thought that was well done. Other than that, the action is good, so I don't really don't have much to complain about it. Besides that, it's just it's so low in quality considering it came out so long ago. Other than that, if they make a new Hulk movie, I'm sure it'd be great. At number sixteen is Iron Man three. Where do I begin with this one? The fake Mandarin is absolutely poorly planned and poorly executed and the directing for this one is good and i do like the um the concept of tony stark um having um post-traumatic um stress and stuff from the events of the avengers i do like that they reference that material but the fake mandarin and the really really weak villain um killian really makes this movie just it was overhyped didn't deserve the hype and shortly fans realized it was not a good movie at number 15 is Thor. Now, while I do like this movie, there is some weak aspects, like the fish-out-of-order stuff is not very interesting in um, terms of action-packed stuff that we thought we were going to get. While it does um, introduce many characters like Loki, who is one of the best characters in the series, um, Odin, Heimdall, um, his mom, Lady Sif, I believe, is in this one, too. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen it. Jane. The fish-out-of-order stuff just doesn't do it for me. It's pretty lame, in my opinion. The Destroyer does serve as a really cool villain, but Loki is the best. This movie is an alright entry into the MCU. In the number four is Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, I really did want to like this movie, and I did like this movie. Um, it's not a great entry into the, uh, MCU because mainly of the, the dark, um, themes of the trailers that we got from the trailers and the movie, all the destruction and death that Ultron wants to cause, while also throwing jokes in there that don't really match up with the dark material they're trying to throw at us. Um, Tony and Bruce really make some idiotic, idiotic decisions in this, creating Ultron. I know people are pretty biased about that. But to be honest, it was all their fault what happened in Sokovia. And I don't really like how this set up future movies. At number 13 is Ant-Man. Now I know people, it's an unpopular opinion, Ant-Man is better than Age of Ultron. I happen to think it is. I mean, it's my opinion, so don't attack me on it. Yellow Jacket is a kind of weak villain, which is, kind, which is why it didn't make its way into the top 10 like it almost did last time. Um, the final battle on the trains is absolutely unforgettable. One of the most memorable scenes in the entire MCU. 
And this movie, I love how it sets up Ant-Man and the Wasp, introducing Evangeline Lilly as the Wasp. And it's really a great, fun movie. Everyone can enjoy And at the number 12 spot is Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, what I really love about this movie is I get to see Steve Rogers go from this small town boy getting beat up in an alleyway, saying that classic line, I can do this all day, to go into this huge, buff, awesome powerhouse that we get to see um, go on these epic missions for the uh, the military. Face off against Red Skull, which comes into play later. We get to see Bucky Barnes, which will be an important character in the future. Peggy Carter also makes an appearance, which is awesome. And I just love when he wakes up and everything he knows has changed forever. At number 11 is Iron Man. Now, I recently watched Iron Man for the first time in a long, long while. Um, as I did with multiple v uh, movies on this which list, will, which will explain their uh, alternate placings. Now, I love watching Tony build his first ever suit. Robert Downey Jr. was f was straight up born to be Iron Man. And uh, it, 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 the story in this is f fantastically done. Um, Obadiah Stane is a very well done Marvel villain. Um, best, the best scene by far is, uh, the I Am Iron Man suddenly reveals that he is Iron Man. It was just so epic to see that when I first watched it, and it's still epic now. Now, this is definitely going to confuse some of you that saw my last ranking video, because I had Captain America the Winter Soldier way low on that list. But in this list, I decided, since I rewatched it and loved it, it is top 10 worthy. So, at number 10 is Captain America the Winter Soldier. That elevator scene is unforgettable. Bucky as a villain is just so heartbreaking for Steve. Epic development from for Nick and uh, Sam Wilson, who is Falcon, and Natasha, who is Black Widow. And um, I love the fight on the plane as well. It's pretty cool. Um, the villain is a pretty is pretty weak, but it is very satisfying when Nick Fury finally kills him, and it's very suspenseful enough. At the number nine spot is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy because this movie is still so iconic and so loved by so many people. There's so many classic moments in this. Um, I still walk around and act like I'm listening to. A Walkman, I listened to Hooked on a Feeling. That's by far my favorite song from the soundtrack. Um, Vin Diesel voicing Groot is always fun. Bradley Cooper voicing Rocket is great as well. And um, Chris Pratt and Dave Bautista and Zoe Saldana do their best in this role. So does Karen Gillan and Michael Rooker. And they just bring together a fantastic movie. Awesome, James Gunn. At number 8 is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Sadly, this is the final movie that James Gunn actually got to produce and put out to the big screen because Guardians Volume 3, he did write the script for it. I don't know if they started filming yet, but James Gunn was fired. Anyway, um, this, is, this serves as a great movie. While Star-Lord, one of my favorite characters in the MCU, is sidelined, we get great characters put into the spotlight like Yondu and and um, Gamora and Karen Gillan's character Nebula and the great villain Ego is pretty good as well. At number seven is Doctor Strange because, wow, what other Marvel movie has so much great visuals packed into it? I feel like Benedict Cumberbatch, while not doing a great job as Doctor Strange in this movie, did an epic job as Doctor Strange in Infinity War. Um... He does provide great comedy and does um, play the egotistical Doctor Strange um, mythical arts master very well. Um, the villain is very weak. The Ancient One is a very cool character. Um, very sad to see. I was very sad to see her go in the movie. Um, but characters like Wong and uh, Mordo were very interesting to see. And I love the look at this side of the MCU. And at the number six spot is Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, I love how they give a nice high school look at the um, superhero lifestyle. We get great characters like Liz, Aunt May, Michelle, um, Karen, the voice inside of uh, Spider-Man's suit, Ned, a.k.a. the guy in the chair. Um, we get some fantastic scenes, man. It's great.
Definitely that final battle with Vulture versus Peter is one of the best final battles in any of the MCU movies, and it's what makes this movie so unforgettable. At number five is Black Panther. Now going into this, I thought it was gonna be a pretty good movie. Nowhere gonna it was I thought it was gonna be in the top ten, but it was gonna be like nine, eight, or ten. No, this ended up being in my top five because I absolutely love what they did with all the characters in this. We get epic characters like Okoye, Shuri, um, even Nakia gets some good scenes in there. I love the character development for T for uh, T'Challa. M'Baku is pretty fun, and Eric Killmonger is probably one of the best um, MCU villains that we've had um, to date. It's definitely worth the hype. Number four spot is the original Avengers. It was so epic to see all these characters finally coming together to fight this epic war against Loki and the Chitauri in one of the best final acts of any Marvel film ever. Um, we get the introduction of Hawkeye. Um, it doesn't get that much introduction until uh, Age of Ultron. Still, this movie is still a classic. I loved watching it when I was little. Got it on DVD. Um, Hulk is amazing. Cap, Thor, Iron Man. It's a nerd's dream come true, basically, to see all these people come together on the big screen. At number three is Thor Ragnarok. Oh my gosh, man. They took an absolutely um dry franchise after the bomb the horrible horrible stinker that was thor the dark world took that out of the splash of comedy action and hilarious antics and thor ragnarok was born hulk is amazing we get great characters like valkyrie and the grandmaster um even korg and meek get some good stuff in there overall Thor Ragnarok is a fantastic family flick that any Thor fan will love. And yes, at number two is Captain America Civil War. We've all waited for this moment. That airport scene, um, like I said, for Avengers, every nerd's dream. In my opinion, um, Captain America Civil War is action-packed, but does have some boring subplot um, scenes with the Russian guy, um, Zemo. But overall, the fight scenes between Iron Man and Cap are unforgettable, and there's some great dialogue between Vision and Scarlet Witch that make this movie so worth it to watch, and epic to watch. The introduction of Black Panther and Spider-Man also adds a brand new touch of flavor to the MCU that probably nobody saw coming unless you saw dozens and dozens of trailers. And, obviously, unless you haven't seen this movie yet, the best MCU film to date is is Avengers Infinity War. The epic battles in Wakanda, Titan, even the one that's in like this subway area with Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive and Cap Falcon, Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, and Vision. It's fantastic, man. The um, very great contrast between all these characters coming together, Doctor Strange and Iron Man, Chris Pratt, Star Chris Pratt, Star Lord meeting together, awesome. Captain America and some others were also great, and the heartbreaking deaths of our heroes like Spider Man and Black Panther really tied this movie up together in a great big ball of emotion that even will make a grown man cry. Really, this was every nerd's dream, just like Avengers and Civil War was. Um, I, I can't believe all the hype it got, um, because I thought people were going to be really upset they were going to be doing this, um, when people knew a lot of the characters that died would be coming back, but it all worked well, and it made tons of money, and it, it, it sure deserved all that money, because I know I'm buying the movie. So guys, that'll be doing it for ranking all 19 films. Until I see Ant-Man and the Wasp, we will not have another ranking video. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye.